This video is meant to serve as an introduction to the 3800 series positioner from FlowServe. This FlowServe does um, give us a great update from the 3200s that we've seen, as well as the 500 series stuff that FlowServe has been putting out for many years. Um, this package gives us a little more versatility, and we're going to focus on the interface in this introduction. So one quick thing to note is that this cover here, it does house three buttons that can be used to access many of the functions without having to declassify it. In previous generations, you always had to remove the cover, but this nice feature update here allows us to work with the unit while not breaking any of these seals and thus overriding the hazardous area approvals that are intrinsic to the design. So first, we're just gonna undo these metric bolts. Most of them have been loosened to make things easy for us, but um, you will need a six millimeter metric Allen, um, just so no one's surprised when they go to work on it in the field. Um, so, you know, all these uh, area approvals require different ways to maintain sealing, whether it's so many threads and so many bolts per an amount of area or so many threads in a cover. So that's why you kind of see everything is a little challenging to take off. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and power it on here. So if you'll just bear with me, um, you'll see that they've done some nice things here with the terminal strip. So you do get, you know, spring terminals here. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of features here that uh, we're not typically used to. So you'll see some analog in, some analog out, four to 20 digitals, um, a bunch of different things that are kind of just intrinsic to the design. But for this purpose, we're just gonna basically hook it up as if we're just simulating with a normal positioner and um, go from there. So as you see it boot up, you're going to see it go through a series of different steps to make sure that the thing is starting up correctly. When you first uh, run it, uh, you'll see an indication to do a full calibration. Um, in this case, this has been on one of our demos, so um, that's not going to be exactly what you'll see. Um, since this one has been calibrated in the past, we are seeing the supply pressure low alarm as long as the corresponding um, color-coded signal that would indicate that as well. All these things will give you as, as diagnostics on how to take care of issues um, when they are in the field. Um, just as before, we've got dip switches up here. Um, this basically helps configure the unit um, with hard-coded buttons versus having to do any kind of programming. So it's, it's more or less letting us know a few things. How is the positioner tubed up to the actuator? Which way is it gonna rotate? There's just a lot of different things as to how it's going to work. So you have air to open, air to close. Um, am I double or single acting? Um, in this case, do I have a linear characteristic or do I have a special one that does have to be programmed and activated here? Um, this tuning, uh, the cowl, are we auto cowling or are we jogging it, which is basically moving it manual to the limits that it's going to travel? Um, our low friction, high friction. So for some of the larger valves with sticky packing, that helps us not to have those uh, issues of stiction where we kind of jump once we're close. So it's uh, trying to prevent some of the things that we've seen in the past and make sure that this positioner isn't always hunting with big valves and overshooting. Um, then you also see a live gain adjustment. So that's been on the series for a while. Um, it does allow you to um, more or less speed up or slow down the response to things with a live gain. Um, so, you know, as you push different things, you can see this will access the menus. Um, you'll see different things as we push through them. Um, so you've got status, alerts and alarms, partial stroke, tuning response, calibration, booster tuning should you have those accessories, configuration, auxiliary I.O., etc. So there's a whole host of different configuration opportunities here that you can run through and get a feel for, you know, how do I want this thing to set up? What do I want it to do um, without having to hook up with a handheld or with a communicator? 
Um, just as you're seeing here, you also get this feedback if you get one with the display, which we, is a uh, standard for what we stock here at Slater Controls. And that, that gives you some, some feedback that anyone who's in the field can understand what the issue is that's being shown. Um, in addition, you'll see the little clip here for either a communicator or a heart modem in the event you're using valve sites or something else to program advanced features. Um, so really a nice package where they've put together, you know, a, a lot of things that are going to be very beneficial to anyone working with this unit in the field. Um, we'll run through some diagnostics and some other features in, for, in future videos, but really that's sort of the basics of the interface. You know, there's, there's nothing too complex about it. It's very simple to figure out, you know, very easy to access menus and to get into things. So, you know, in general, I think it gives us a very good understanding of what you're going to expect when you have this in the field. With the buttons that were on the housing again, you can use those to manipulate just like you can here. So if you wanted to see, for instance, the status, like we looked at earlier, you could hit that middle button. Um, we'll go to alerts and alarms here, just to give you a feel for that. So, you know, this kind of gives you um, an indication of what's going on. So, you know, we have three alarms. So this one's supply pressure low, um, tight shutoff mode, and then as we look down, you know, we can see in the event history, the different things that are showing up in terms of alarms. So you gotta go the right direction. So supply pressure low, it was turned on here. We had a supply pressure low. You can see that there's an internal clock that's keeping up with the time frames when all these different things happened. So it does give you some backup to um, record events and make sure that if something happens, you can verify it. Um, those questions of, did someone uh, mess with this thing? Um, you know, a lot of times we don't know that. So, you know, again, this, this interface is gonna provide you a lot more information and details on what may or may not be going on with your valve. Um, and in general, just give you a great user experience with a positioner that's well-founded in terms of actually controlling your valve as expected. Um, we do get the typical gauges that allow you to see your supply pressure as well as the outputs to either, you know, the single acting side if you are running at single acting or to both sides if you're running at double acting. So that still gives us uh, um, the feedback of knowing, you know, is the valve shutting off? Am I putting all the air to one side when it should be? Um, all those traditional pneumatic indicators that tell us is, this, is the positioner working as it should as it moves the valve around. Um, so with that, that's really the introduction to the interface of the 3800, and we'll be putting forth uh, some other videos on calibration, uh, deeper dive into some of the menus, so uh, stay tuned.